Well, welcome to Fight Week. How are you feeling? Thank you. I feel good. Feels good to be here. So you have a new opponent, though. What's, what's Fight Week been like since you got the new name, and how has the adjustments been made? Uh, it, was, it was a really long camp, you know, uh, getting ready for a certain type of fighter, and then for that to be flipped completely 180. Um, some things had to change, but not, not too much, you know. I have to... Uh, you know, I have to do my job still and uh, stick to the game plan and, and the new wrinkles that I've been working on. So, Was there a period of time where you thought maybe you wouldn't have a fight at all? Or was it he's out, he's in right away? No, um, it was like a two-day uh, period where, you know, nothing was, was said. And uh, you got to remember, there was, another, there was a fight in Abu Dhabi. So, you know, my manager was over there. So I, it was just miscommunications, I guess. And... It was like two days, and I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to have a fight. Do you keep training during that two days? I, know, I probably know your answer, but... Yeah, of course, yeah. you know. Um, that was also the, uh, the other part that was kind of like weird. It's like, man, I still got to go through all this hell, and I don't even know if it's for certain. So tell me the thoughts when you got the, the name. Were you just happy to have an opponent, or were you happy at, that it was this person? I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to have an opponent, um, Man, because I think uh, one or two days later, it probably would have got scratched. And, and they already got pushed back a week before that. So, um, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was excited. I, he stepped up and, uh, you know, at this point, it doesn't matter who it is. What do you know about him? Uh, I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, so, Quang Lee, I believe is his name. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 8-0, um, very young in the sport. Uh, but, you know, um, he's got talent. He's got, you know, he's got a good right hand so uh don't know much about him uh he comes from other organizations you know he's been working his way up but uh he gets the call so we get to see what he's about how do you pre prepare for a, a guy like that where you know you don't probably have a lot of highlights you don't know a lot about him um i'm sorry say that again how do you prepare for a fight like that where you don't really know what to expect because he doesn't have a lot of highlights he hasn't been in the ufc yet yeah i mean um I mean, it's a fight, you know what I mean? It's uh, one, twos, kicks, takedowns, you know, it's kind of all the same. Um, you know, I just pr believe in my training and what I'm doing and what I'm capable of. That's how I prepare. So he described you as having sneaky skills, and I think he meant that in a good way. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you, do you, I, didn't, I didn't hear what you said. He said sneaky. He just described you as sneaky, like having sneaky kicks, sneaky punches. All right. You like I like that? it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, uh, you kind of got to be sneaky in this sport. You can't just stay in front of someone. Uh, you usually, it doesn't end up well for you. So, uh, yeah, I can take it as a compliment. Do you ever think about when you're getting these names that, you know, you're the one that has a lot to lose? This person's coming in, it's his debut. People aren't expecting a lot from him. Does that cause you a little bit of hesitation? Is that fun pressure? Is that, what do you feel when people say that? Um, no, I, I mean, I'm sorry, to be honest, I was completely out of it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, um, you know, when, when people say, you know, he's coming in and he has nothing to lose, and you have everything to lose because you're already here, you have a position you need to hold, he's coming in brand new, short notice, if he loses, he can say, well, you know. He was supposed to lose, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know, it's a, it is a, a win lose in a way um, I'm supposed to win uh, but that's not always the case so uh, I got to go out there and still do a job I got to go out there and, and perform and, and put them away uh, whether it's on the feet or on the ground uh, you know I'm still in this I'm, st I'm still one of the top uh, ranked fighters in this division um, you know my last fight didn't go according to plan but that's okay I took on the number seventh ranked guy when no one would answer the phone call um, and I had just fought previous after that, so I was still going into that fight camp already hurt, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my name carries some weight to it, and um, I'm going to show that and prove it on Saturday. And last thing for me, he predicted a first-round knockout. What do you think of that? He predicts a first-round knockout. So do I. So we're going to have fun. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I know you've been around the game for a while, so what are your thoughts on the positive and negative mental factors of being an undefeated fighter? I mean, there is pressure, you know, there is pressure. Um, you want to keep that O, you know, it's everyone's, 
no one want, no one wants to lose. No one, you know, everyone hates to lose. So there is a lot of pressure in that. Um, so he's got to carry that. Um, you know, I got a couple losses. You know, I know what it feels like to be on the other side, uh, but I also know what it feels like to bounce back. You know, I've done it multiple times, and uh, I plan to do it Saturday again as well. And just in my personal opinion, it felt like there was a little bit of nervous energy with him. So looking back on your, your UFC debut, what was that jump like going from LFA and then fighting in the UFC? Uh, for people that say it's not, there is. It's, uh, you know, you finally get to the, uh, you finally get into the cage and you look down and you see those three letters. And then it kind of hits you, you're like, shit, man, like, I was just watching this last week. Now I'm actually here. Now people are watching me. So... It is, it is. It is a pressure. How you handle it, everyone is different. We get to see how he, handle, he, how he handles that. And last one for me, building off that, how about the same jump skill-wise? You know, fighting some good guys on the regional scene, and now you go to the UFC, let's say, you know, you fight someone that's one and three in the UFC, and you're like, whoa, this is better than anyone I think I've fought in the past. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I think there's some, some truth to that. Um, but again, that's, I, I believe everybody handles things differently. So the thing is with him, let's see how he, he handles it, you know? And actually, one more for me. Do you think that facing a guy like this, UFC debut, undefeated, like we've talked about, it is one of those things where as the fight goes on that you'll be able to kind of pickle away a little bit at his confidence, make him second-guess himself? Um, I mean, I was, gonna, I was planning to do that no matter what. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Just one quick one. I know you, you had experience in the LFA. Here's this guy come with the LFA. A lot of times people look at a fighter and they're like, well, he never fought in the UFC, so he must have never been tested. What did you think about when you came over to the UFC and you had some tough fights in LFA and you had some other ones? Do you think people would be discounting fighters coming in for the first time when they see that they've never fought at the UFC before? To each their own, right? Like me, I was different. Um, you know, I don't, just because he's coming from LFA, I'm not looking, I am not looking at this fight like I'm going to obliterate this guy because he has not fought any UFC caliber fighters. I, I don't think like that. I, to me, he's a world champion. He's been in the UFC for a while. That's the way my mind thinks. Um, I have to prepare for these fights like I'm fighting a world champion. Otherwise, you underestimate him and, you know, oftentimes that doesn't lead to good things. And with that, if you're training to fight the world champion, it doesn't really matter if it's a short notice or who's opposite of the cage because you're training for the best possible person ever out there. Correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in your mind, you, uh, you create so many, you know, so many versions of the guy that he's the best everywhere. So it causes you to like grow in a little bit and expand and, and, and try to, you know, pursue different things and just try to grow as well. You know, you're fighting the best fighters in the world in your mind. So you got to train for yourself to be the best fighter you can be. And we talked with some fighters earlier today about, you know, there's always that nervousness. No matter how much experience you have on fight night, there's always going to be some sort of bit of nervousness. Fight night, when does that go away for you? When does that switch? Is it when you're in the cage? Is it when you're walking out? When for you do you feel nothing but the fight? Everything else is just quiet. Uh, once, once you're walking, like once you start walking to the cage, you know, you kind of are, you know, it, that's when it, it kind of switches, you know. Or even in the back when you start letting them go. But sometimes you're still nervous. Uh, but usually when that cage closes, it's like, all right, we got to go. I'm here, you know, so. Does your walkout music pump you up? Does, do you choose your song for a particular reason? Or is it you're so zoned out you don't even hear the, the music playing? No, I, I choose that song for a reason. I, I like it. It, it, uh, it you know, it, uh, it represents me a little bit. So I just, I just like the meaning of it. You know, it's uh, Bandolero. It's just, you know, someone who's, who gets looked down on, like he's, a, you know, like he's a bad person. But, you know, we all make mistakes. We all try to be better. That's what it's all about. That's awesome. And last, uh, keys to victory. What needs to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised on Saturday? I uh, need to hit him with some of this and some of that. <laughs> and just, that's for you guys to see. Can't wait. Good luck on Saturday. You're welcome. Thank you, guys.